It wasn't until 2003 that Kane lost the mask permanently, mm -hmm. creating an all-time raw moment in the process. Yep. Oh my God! Hey man, I just want y'all to understand. Once I saw this, and I saw my man's hairline back here, that's when I knew for sure this nigga is a menace and not to be messed with. Because anybody's hairline that's back here, like back here by your ears, like it starts where your earlobe starts. And that's where your hairline travels. Oh, nah. Don't mess with this person. They, they legit are a monster. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who wore the coolest ring attire. Now, being a professional wrestler, you gotta be good in the ring. It's also a good thing to have great entrance music. You know, being uh, able to talk on a microphone, sell a match, have a good promo segments. And another big important thing is having some good wrestling attire. If your wrestling attire is good, that's another part of the battle that you have won. If it looks goofy, if it looks silly, if it looks dumb, you're dead. For example, Karrion Cross, he was great in NXT. How they presented him in NXT, this serious individual that uh, can legitimately take you down. Uh, a monster, a threat. Brought him to the main roster originally with that Roman like Empire gimmick. It was, it was awful. He looked stupid. And it killed his presentation instantly with fans that didn't know who he was. And it killed his presentation with fans who did know who he was. So uh, an, a wrestling attire can be very important. You can have the greatest theme in the world, but if you are if you look goofy out there, nobody's going to want to buy you into what you're selling. So we're going to check this out. Should be a good one. Let's get right into it, man. One self disarm. One self disarm. Pageantry, look, and presentation are a huge part of wrestling. You'll always remember those characters whose appearance made them jump off the screen. From yep. the entrance gear to the masks, face paint, and in-ring attires. We'll be covering some of the best examples today as we highlight 10 wrestlers with the coolest ring gear. Rey Mysterio has had so oh, many different course. masks throughout his career. It was rare to see him wear the same one twice. This coupled with Rey's popularity has resulted in endless merchandise that has positioned him as one of the biggest merch sellers in wrestling history. Though yep. there were many different fits and colors, the three main designs of Rey's masks usually Say the same. Here he comes, the exciting Rey Mysterio. As a kid, that's all you want an autograph, something. I love you, <laughs> One of Mysterio's most famous outfits was a full body suit he wore at Halloween Havoc 1997 for his five star classic against Eddie Guerrero. First and the only one that I had to put on the shirt in order to put the mask. It was just one piece. The mask comes down with the turtleneck and it's part of the shirt. Right. So you can't take the mask off. You're going to have to rip it off. Ray's masks were made by Japanese Classic. designer Masahiro Hayashi. The masks helped Mysterio become a real life superhero and one of the most identifiable wrestlers of all time. Facts. Because Ray Mysterio is the most famous masked man in the world. And I'm very, very honored and very happy that he became a superhero in the world. That the Falcons signify my style of wrestling cross my belief, as the calendar, my ancestries. That mask is his life. It's been- Yeah, his mask, his masks are dope, bro. Iconic. Like, will go down as one of the, you know, best luchadors of all time. One of, and not even just luchadors, just one of the best wrestlers of all time. He's definitely goaded, definitely Hall of Fame, you know, Obviously, him being in the Hall of Fame, but, you know, he's worthy of it. And his attire is also great. He always has a dope attire, dope theme. It works. Ray's, he, you, can, you can't hate Ray. He's fucking, it's Ray, man. Part of his tradition, <laughs> it transforms me. Ray's masks and costumes have often paid homage to yeah. different characters from movies and comic books. Lost this matchup and had to do that here tonight at WrestleMania. Can you imagine what young Aaliyah and his son Dominic? And now it's Cody Rhodes tonight. Yep, Dominic. Captain America. Alabama slam. Mysterio made me out right here. Rhodes has him. Cinderella story of two Silver Surfer. Ray Mysterio is back. <laughs> this one didn't go as planned, but it was cool to see. <laughs> the highlight of careers to yeah, all devil. in the sports entertainment industry. And for Ray Mysterio, Taz. 
Flash, yep. Uh huh. Look at that. What do you think? The green hair? I think that race career is alive and well. Kate. It's been rare to see Mysterio without his mask in WWE. Yeah, but whenever it does rare. come off, it always makes for a big moment. On occasion, wrestlers have been able to defeat Ray after successfully removing his mask. Yep. The mask came off! The mask came off! Jericho wins it! Wrap around his head! Oh no! The mask of yep. the Hall of Famer! Pulls him up! What is he doing? Rob Van Dam's wrestling singlets featured eye-catching designs that were each unique to his character in some Definitely way. From the yin-yangs to the dragons to the yep. RVD initials, Van Dam's outfits were always on point. They were airbrushed by artist Joe Holland, who provided the whole effing show with brand new singlets every week. RVD singlets were fuck, fucking fire too. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> Never lost at WrestleMania. He's 2 and 0. And he knows a hell of a lot about ladders. I guess this one's a little special. The, uh, the outfit that I won the world championship in. Yep. A lot of fans would agree that my outfits were awesome and that that was another thing that made me stand out and be different. Yeah. And then, like I said at the beginning of the video, having an awesome attire works so well too because people can instantly see who you are and they already gravitate like, oh man, I like his, uh, like his singular. I like the, the different designs. Every week it's something different. Not every wrestler is going to have that, but if you're able to incorporate that into your overall, you know, uh, I guess you could say package of your character to the fans, I mean, you're pretty much golden. People are going to always know who you are. They're going up oh, there. It goes RVD. I can tell. Different. The action figure people loved it because yeah. they could make so many action figures out of me because of my different outfits, just like Rey Mysterio. One yeah. of Bob's most popular attires was the orange tiger stripes. It was worn in both ECW and WWF and has had a few redesigns over the years. It is Rob Van Dam, and he works now with the WWF referee. Classic. Kurt Angle was another wrestler known for his many different singlets, which were uh -huh. naturally very patriotic in design. Aside from some of the amateur wrestling singlets he wore at the start of his career, Angle's gear was made in-house by the WWE's designers. It was always interesting to see how creative they got, blending the red, white, and blue together mm -hmm. in many unique ways. And it worked for Kurt. He should have a different variation of the red, white, and blue, because he's a US Olympian. That's part of his character. It worked. For Kurt Angle, it is a lot about Matt Wrestling, but as we saw at the Royal Rumble with that vicious assault on Shawn Michaels. Yep. Kurt Angle's favorite gear. Does Kurt have a favorite ring attire that you wore for a match? Yeah, the one where I look like a candy cane. A lot of fans <laughs> hated it. I've gotten a lot of comments. I hate your damn singlet. But I absolutely <laughs> loved it. I, I gave most of my gear to charities and Hall of Fames. I was That's never... Awesome. Uh, a, a keepsake kind of person. Kurt's Team Angle stable had similar designs for their mm -hmm. singlets. Kurt Angle's got some serious back Wow. This was my favorite singlet of all time. You can see there's like some wear in it and stuff, yeah. you know, like. The both men wow. so much energy out here. From their and iconic match. Kurt's fellow Olympia, Chad Gable, would also begin to don uh -huh. Angle-inspired gear after starting up the American Maid faction. The debut tonight of Uncle Howdy. Yeah. You obviously see the inspiration. Randy Savage's colorful outfits oh, were the perfect yeah. match with larger-than-life personality. These outfits not only made the Macho Man stand out, they helped put him on par with the larger Max. wrestlers. Savage wasn't bigger than them physically, so he had to outshine them from a presentation standpoint, doing so with lavish clothing and bright colors that just mm -hmm. screamed superstar. Yeah. You can see, my, my man 
as soon as he hopped out, popped out wherever he was at, he was the center of attention. How can you not be the center of attention looking like that, having promos? Oh, yeah. Like, come on, man. It's Macho Man, bro. Come on now. The truth. Let me just tell you something right now. I'll just wait, tell him straight. Excuse me. No. Now tell him straight. Okay, no. We need to help each other on his. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the limousine moment to go. But for Macho Man Randy Savage, six days away. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Macho's outfits were made by fashion designer Michael Braun, with each piece costing a hefty fee. He actually has some of Macho Man's clothes that that michael made for macho man nobody can wear randy's clothes nobody they all look silly there's something about this person fits these clothes yeah nah i don't i can't see no one else doing wearing that except him he that's the crazy thing certain people they can wear things that if i or you were to wear we would look like some fucking idiots some goofballs but he can wear this because his personality is so eccentric it it fits it fits the drip did spend money on his outfits and they were lavish and extraordinary and colorful randy spent a lot of money on the perception of who the macho man was what he's trying to say to me is the clothes help me to be believable the macho man's outfits they were straight from some pimp's imagination <laughs> certainly did a great job for our business Randy Savage is going to go down in the record books, one of the all-time greats. Kane was Resting's answer to a horror movie villain, with mm -hmm. mannerisms that borrow from the likes of Michael Myers and yep. Jason Voorhees, the latter of whom also inspired the mask worn by the Big Red Machine. I will set myself on fire. Classic mask. Iconic mask. <laughs> oh, hope that coffee didn't burn you. <laughs> I have no idea what it's like to be burnt. The and mask in here can use evolved over time as each incarnation built upon the mystique and lore of the seven foot monster. Why did I choke slam my brother? I am a monster! What? 300. What? <laughs> Look at what Edge and Chris are looking at. They're looking at two monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Not slamming someone with one arm while drinking some beer. 6'10", 326. That red machine is back. By God, is he back. <laughs> And yeah, I would put the mask on. And of course, I was always Glenn. But I mean, there was something that, that kind of changed and, and you could do some things automatically. You didn't have to think about how do I move or how do I do this? It's just Yeah, once you put that mask on, you change. <laughs> it's kind of like your body and your mind already knew what to do. Kane was unmasked a few times during various angles. Yep. He's being unmasked. But it wasn't until 2003 that Kane lost the mask permanently, uh -huh. creating an all-time raw moment in the process. Yep. Oh my God! Hey man, I just want y'all to understand. Once I saw this, and I saw my man's hairline back here, that's when I knew for sure this nigga is a menace and not to be messed with. Because anybody's hairline that's back here, like back here by your ears, like it starts where your earlobe starts and that's where your hairline travels. Oh, nah, don't mess with this person. They they legit are a monster. Oh my God, is that a human? The Ultimate Warrior is one of the most iconic face painted Makes wrestlers. Sense. He's the paint, on this along too. with his neon attire and energetic persona, helped him feel like a beloved superhero. Warrior was a crazed menace, running to the ring while dressing and behaving like a madman. Yeah. He was hyped up on that booger sugar. <laughs> Hogan better run for his 
Yep. <laughs> the Warriors promos were an entertaining sight. He looked like something from another planet, while making yeah. sounds and speaking a space language that didn't sound English. Fear the giant. Ah, fear! He's an aberration! Jump on my back! Grab a body part and hang on. We don't live by the normal explosiveness that can never ever be created. <laughs> He's the intercontinental champion. The you are nothing but a normal. You don't deserve to breathe the same air. Sting's surfer look <laughs> epitomized the era he wrestled in, of which he was one of the leading stars. Yep. Sting's bleach blonde hair complemented his bright neon attire. Yep. I ain't gonna lie to you, wrestlers had that drip back in the day. Boys had the drip, but it was all about trying to get seen, trying to get over with the crowd. The Stinger! And I'll tell you what, this is what I mean. In one championship, I oh. promise you that. Well, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> I'll stand by you if you stand by me. <laughs> Look at that. The new heavyweight champion of the world. The stinger is coming. Check it out. Oh, yeah. It was incredible to see Sting transition to a much darker character in the uh -huh. late 90s. The crow look was a night and day difference in every aspect compared to the surfer. Sting became the anti-hero, who didn't mm -hmm. need to talk much because the look, presentation, and aura spoke volumes. It worked. Making Singer an even bigger star than he was before. The only thing that's for sure about Sting is nothing's for sure. That's Sting! <laughs> that is Sting! My man would just be sitting high up in the rafters just watching. Like you love it. <laughs> Where is he anyway? Way high up above the fan. What is this? All? To show up anywhere. Yes. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Look how crowd, crazy the crowd, the crowd is going, bro. <laughs> I love how Sting would take off a sting mask just to reveal his face. I fucking love it. <laughs> what a night. He's still holding him off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. But you can't tell me that ain't funny. You <laughs> picking up somebody and taking them to the Raptors with you. <laughs> what a night. He's still holding him off. <laughs> That is a cool entrance. I ain't gonna lie to you. Right at Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And his charisma was so huge. He didn't need to say anything. Yep. He could say more with a look than people could say in a 10 minute interview. I used to think I was so invincible. Sometimes I do feel that way still. Finn Balor's special ring attire is unique in that it's also a completely different character. Good His to have him on the list as well. On special occasions, whenever the storyline requires it. Finn's body paint is different each time, but the main basis of the demon centers around Irish mythology. The king of the demons, Balor. When his evil eye opens, the world ends. These are not just stories. They are a source of power. The demon is superhero-like in that he harbors greater powers in the ring than Finn does on his own. And the fans liked it too. But the beauty of the character is how scarcely it's used. Balor can only mm -hmm. channel the demon in unique circumstances. This persona is characterized by its striking appearance and unmistakable aura. Look at that. Look at that. Finn Balor unleashing the malignant spirit within, releasing the demon. Cool presence, cool presentation. Cool presentation.
Cast off. Cool Michael's flamboyant style and distinguished fashion sense was exemplified by his ring and entrance gear. Big and he'd be on his list too. Julie Youngberg, who Sean gave full creative license to make whatever would pop and fit HBK's character. The result was some of the finest clothing ever mm -hmm. seen in wrestling, the type of which only the heartbreak kid could pull off. Yep. Yeah. Ladies love Sean. Inspiration from Madonna. Oh, so that should give you some clue. I did. His hats, his earrings, his sunglasses, his chaps, his vests. <laughs> Not the chaps. Tights, trunks, wrist cuffs. You have this guy that looks like he could sing with the village people, right? I mean, he's got the chaps and the, the stuff and the hat and the song. Mm -hmm. It was one of the first ones I wore with DX. And I wear that one now. I like that one. It's not overtly DX. We've had a lot of champions, a lot of great champions, but we've only ever had one showstopper. For sure. His drip matched his persona a million times over. He was the showstopper. He was flamboyant. You knew when Sean came out there, he was going to be eccentric. You knew it. In the world of the day, he's right there. He's Sean of all the wrestlers that have donned entrance robes over the years, Ric Flair's yep. were always the most extravagant. Yep. They became a pivotal piece of his flashy persona, identity, and overall mm -hmm. presentation. Flair was like a peacock, wooing audiences and showing off for all to see. Nature Boy, it says on his back. Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Classic. Classic drip. The robes were made by a woman named Olivia Walker, and each cost tens of thousands of dollars. Ooh. If you wanted to buy the best car in the world, you would naturally go to get a Rolls Royce, correct? Well, if you want a robe, and if you want the Rolls Royce maker of, of the robes, it would have to be Olivia Walker. You can buy these anytime you want for about uh, ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000. That is crazy. $11,000 for the robe. That just lets you know how much money they were making back in the day, bro. He's dropping 11K on the robes, and he's out there coming out there with different type of robes. It ain't always the same one. That's bread. And obviously, they're, they're made well. You know, you can tell it's real high-quality stuff, so damn. The most ever spent on one was 15000 Okay, so your last match with uh, Sean. The average price of one's around ten grand over my career. No one has style. No one has profile. Hey, not gonna lie to you, that motherfucker is fire, bro. And that match, that match, HBK and and Ric Flair, one of the best WrestleMania matches of all time for sure. Great way to supposedly end Ric Flair, uh, Ric Flair's career, but it. Classic match. Love that match. Great emotion behind it and drip. Understandably so. I you gonna pay almost 20k for your retirement match. Retirement match. <laughs> Quite like that man. A couple other guys started wearing robes that Friday, and I just told Olivia, I said, spend two or three dollars more. I want mine to look nice and be better. You know, a lot of guys wore robes. A lot of guys wore fancy robes. Yeah. They didn't kind of do it the way that Rick did. No. Nope. <laughs> Rick's daughter Charlotte has also uh -huh. worn similar style robes during her career as a tribute to the nature yeah. boy. In his retirement match. And Charlotte wearing it to the ring here tonight. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check this out a dope. similar video mm -hmm. on wrestling entrance theme. This was dope, man. Is it like I said at the beginning of this video, having a good uh attire to the ring helps just as much as good music just as well as being good in the ring, just as well as being able to talk to the people to sell them on the match. It's not easy being a wrestler, but if you can get a few of these things down pat, you'll be surprised how far you go, man. This was a dope video. Love checking out these type of vids, going back down memory lane, checking out some of our favorite wrestlers and their drips. Uh, hopefully he does a video of wrestlers with the worst drip because there, there have been some that are just awful to look at and you just like 
get this off my TV stream. This looks like trash. But comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite wrestler, like uh, wrestler of ring attire. Doesn't matter who it is. You know, it could have been some in this video. Like your favorite wrestler's ring attire. You always thought they had the drip. You like what they always wore to the ring. You let me know who they are down below. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.